Welcome to A Canadian Investing in the U.S., a podcast and YouTube channel focused on Canadians buying real estate with host Glenn Sutherland. Welcome to another episode of A Canadian Investing in the U.S. This week, my guest is Brian Tripp. Um, at this point, if you listen to the show, I never give intros to anybody. I always get them to introduce themselves. But for Brian, I'm going to give a slight intro. So, like, Brian is an author of two books, uh, I originally found Brian because, as you can see, I got my Alabama. I was waiting for, like, roll tide. there's no, yeah, exactly. Every time I hear your keynote, there's always something about Roll Tide. So I'm like, I am going to, like, layer up. I got, like, layers of Alabama stuff, right? <laughs> <laughs> I could have brought the hats. I got, like, ten shirts. Anyway, but um, I started listening to Brian's podcast, like, three or four years ago. And the reason I listened to it, it was back when it was Alaria. And I listened to it because I was investing in Alabama, and I wanted information on Alabama. And honesty, you want to search Alabama real estate like for uh, content, this is the man that comes up. <laughs> this is the man, and this is where I, this is how I learned some of my stuff. Some of his guests he had on, like I'm, I'm a Huntsville uh, investor, so I, I can't remember some of the names, but you had some guys on. That's how I, in the early days, how I figured out some neighborhoods to go in, some neighborhoods to stay out of. And it was like a great resource for getting started. And like for people who were like, hey, I want to go into Kansas City or I want to go into, I don't know, Mississippi, wherever you want to go, maybe find a podcast in that area, especially right now with all this COVID stuff. Find some meetups that are online because a lot of them are doing videos right now because they got used to that over the, the COVID stuff. Um, but anyway, we're going to talk about marketing in this. I haven't even let Brian have a word in yet. But we're going to talk about some marketing, or sorry, some networking. And before everyone turns out networking, this is what you're going to learn. You're going to learn how to raise money because everyone's like, well, I don't, I don't want to listen about marketing or uh, networking. But if you want to learn how to raise money, how to find deals, how to do JVs, how to find funding, the best contractors, it's going to come from other people's referrals. It's not going to come from you searching Google and figuring out it's going to be someone else who's already doing it and that they can help you join the pieces. And that's really how I grow my business all over the United States is by networking and meeting people. And like Brian's literally, literally wrote the book on that. <laughs> so normally I, I usually just make everyone introduce themselves, but I actually gave you a bit of an intro there. Brian, uh, what did I miss? Tell me, tell me a bit more about yourself. <laughs> no, Glenn. Well, first of all, Glenn, thank you so much for having me. And thank you so much for the kind words. I really do appreciate it. When I first got started um, doing the whole, I guess, content thing, um, which I, everyone's doing now. But, oh, yeah. Um, you know, four or five years ago, um, one of my mentors, Joe McCall, um, kind of set me aside. and was like, look, a lot of people are doing podcasts where you can really make noise very quickly is to niche yourself down even further than just a real estate podcast. So, and, and he used to tell me the riches are in the niches, right? And then you, you have done a great job of niching yourself and, and creating a, you, you probably I haven't listened to your show. I'm going to, yeah. um, but you've, you've probably done a really good job of focusing specifically on a, a niche target audience. And I think that that's the way to be successful. That's the way to network. It's really the way to do anything because the, the riches are in the niches. And so when I first got started, as you mentioned, it was all Alabama is, I was trying to figure out, um, obviously I'm, I'm in Birmingham. So a lot of Birmingham stuff, we went up to Huntsville and probably interviewed three or four people from Huntsville, Mobile, Montgomery, and just tried to figure out real estate from an Alabama standpoint. Cause like you said, we were the only Alabama based real estate podcast for about two years and then some other people started doing it we ended up opening up nationwide so yeah. but um as far as giving me you know a little bit more introduction of what i'm doing today um you know i I've, I've built my entire business on the the backbone of networking where i'm doing wholesale deals today I'm doing, I don't have the robust wholesale business that I used to have, you know, the 20,000 plus in marketing every month and just doing crazy volume. We're not doing that kind of stuff. I've been there, done that. Uh, but I wholesale today. I'm flipping a couple of houses here and there. I do a lot of creative stuff. And I would say, I want to say 100%, but I think there's a couple in there that get sprinkled in. So 99% of the deals that I find come through my network. And 99% of anything I do comes through my network. 
like telling some of these stories, I, I think a lot of the, the stories I tell have like specific points on networking. First oh, of all, yeah. I think that ne- networking is vital. Um, and we, we hear people say, you know, your network is your net worth. We hear that all the time. But what does that actually mean? Like, how do we actually do that? And so I've kind of been on this quest for the past couple of years. I, I'm, I'm in the process of writing, but it's actually done. I'm writing another book. It's called The ROI of Life. Um, and I'm trying to figure out how to get this message out to the masses to where it's not you know, oh, networking, you know, fall asleep. I don't want to sit and talk about networking again, but really and truly I saw someone, um, someone I follow, probably you follow too, uh, a a real estate influencer put up maybe a month ago on their social media about how, um, I think it was like houses or I think it was houses is the lifeblood of real estate. And I just like, I put a comment on there. I'm like, I think people (laughs) are the lifeblood of real estate. I think people are the lifeblood of anything that we do. And if we don't understand that, recognize that and figure out how to work together, then I, I think that we're, we're really missing it. And, and I missed it for a long time. And I built a pretty big business, probably the biggest wholesaling business in the state of Alabama, you know, 2013, 14, 15, into 2016 even. And ended up scaling way, way back because I felt like I was really missing something because it was just me and I was working and working and working and hustling and hustling. And, and that's fine. If that's, and I think that, that hustle is fine for a time, for a season, but you don't want to hustle forever. No. Oh. The point we hustle, the, the reason why we hustle is so that we don't have to one day. And But the, the problem for me, and I think the problem for a lot of people out there, is we just can't figure out how to sustain something for that, that you know, we're going to hustle and hustle and hustle, and now we have something to show for it. At the end of the day, a lot of us are, we are our business. You know, we go back to, um, you know, I, I got started reading Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and, and if you... Um, if, if any of your, your audience, any of your listeners have, have read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, you, know, you kind of understand kind of the basics of investing in real estate. Well, my favorite book, one of my favorite books is, is Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Some, some call it Rich Dad, Poor Dad Part 2, which is the cash flow quadrant, yeah. which is where we, where we understand the difference between being an employee and then being self-employed. And then the other side of the quadrant has the business owner and the investor. Well, I never understood the difference between – what's the difference between being self-employed and being a business owner? I don't understand the difference. They're both, you both own a business. Well, Robert Kiyosaki talks about in that book, well, as a, as a self-employed person, you own a job. As a business owner, you own a business. You own a set of systems and processes that, uh, that allow you to, to, to make money where you're not in the business working on it every single day. So that's where I really had to kind of l- learn to shift my thinking and shift my focus to, to people because the only way we can get – um, that business, that true business where, where you know, we make income without it really being in it every single day all the time, it has to do with people. People have to run these systems for you. People, do we have a VA? Do we have just on a simple, on a, on a, on a kind of bottom kind of level where we're just really trying to get going? Do we have a VA? Do we have like people cold calling for us if that's what we're doing? People sending our direct mail. Remember Joe McCall, one of my mentors when I first got started, said – you should never spend more than just a couple of minutes a week on your marketing. It should, it should be push button. You push a button and it goes out and the marketing should almost be automatic. So I've had to learn these things kind of the hard way. And, and, you know, that's kind of the quest I've been on is, you know, how can, how can we help other people to understand that, that people are truly the lifeblood of the real estate business. And that's how you can actually end up making the most money while helping other people, while, while you're collaborating. How can we collaborate and not compete with other people? How can we collaborate? How can we join resources together? So that's kind of like the point and the quest. You told me to tell some stories I can, but I'm, yeah. I'm rambling here. So no, no, I love specific it. Specific questions. Yeah, I know. So you're you're talking collaboration and this stuff. So how do we how do we collaborate with people? How do we add value to people when Yeah, there's there's tons of ways that we can collaborate with others and and I think the biggest question um that you or I a lot of people who have influence get asked is how do I get started? You know, it's like probably like the number one, how do I get started? And I don't I don't know anything or how or how can I how can I network with someone or how can I collaborate with someone where I don't have any experience? 
Yeah. I've never done anything before. I don't know anything about real estate. I don't have, because the way I define networking is, is really just you're providing value to someone else. Well, the question becomes, how can I, as someone who's brand new to real estate, provide value to someone who's been doing it for years, if not decades, what do I have that could possibly help this person? Um, and, and this, you know, I told, I tell this story a lot yep. and it's actually in, in my first book. Um, well, my first main book, um, yep. you said I have two books, the first, the actual first book I have, I wrote a, like a little wholesaling manual, but the okay. actual first book I have is, is, is called, um, uh, nothing's for sale. And I wrote, I put this story in there where it's a, a, a local house flipper here in Birmingham who has tons of influence, who's a really incredible guy. It's hard to really, people like that, people that have been doing it for a while, they kind of, they get inundated with requests to, Hey, you mind if I pick your brain, take you to lunch, ride around with you and all these things. And that's fine. There's nothing, you know, really wrong with asking, you know, it's, it takes you know, some boldness and confidence to ask a question like that. But people, the, the problem is business, too, sorry to cut you off, but the, pe the problem is that people get like even myself and I'm sure you too, is you get a lot of people doing it and you only have so much time in a day. Yeah, for sure. And it's, it, for me, it's not necessarily a time in the day thing. I mean, I value my time for sure, but I've got a lot of time, you know, I've okay. kind of set up my business in a sense where I do have time and I do like to help people, but I want to help people at scale um, versus like going to lunch with someone for 30 minutes or an hour of my time. It's one-on-one. -on -one. I would rather spend an hour of my time in front of 10 or 15 or 20 people to where I can provide value at scale. Um, so anyway, going back to, going back to this guy, I didn't want to go up to him and say, Hey, can I take you to lunch and pick your brain? Hey, can I, um, I don't know, uh, get, ride around with you and learn real estate. I present, I took my ability, my talent that I had, which is video work, um, shooting videos, editing video, um, YouTube, social media, uh, marketing, things like that. Content marketing. I took my skills that I already had and I presented my skills to him without expecting anything in return. Obviously I hope for something in return for sure, yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah. you know, if nothing, nothing happens in return, it's no big deal. I'm providing a value to someone and a service to someone. And maybe my service is so good that they would want to use me um, for my yeah. actual service. Yeah. So I, I presented it to him. Hey, you know what? Do you mind if I ride around with you for a day, spend a day with you? I want to learn real estate, but I want to bring a camera with me. I want to record you, record what you're doing, make some videos for you and put them out. And maybe it can help you buy more houses. Maybe it can help you with your marketing. He didn't, he'd never done anything like that before. And he did, he wasn't really sure if that was actually going to be something that would provide value to him, but he's such a good guy. And we kind of became pretty quick friends. We kind of hit it off. He's like, yeah. come on. Um, we'll, we'll, we can kind of see where it goes. So I spent, I only spent like four or five hours with him in one day. And I created out of four or five hours, I made a seven part series, about 10 minute videos, 10 minute, you know, yes. kind of me asking him basic questions about house flipping. And, you know, we went into houses, looked at houses. I made a seven part series. This is probably 2016, um, yeah. maybe early 2017. And I put these videos out and for our area, I don't want to say they went viral. Yeah. But for our area, they did go viral. I mean, like every realtor in town, every investor in town, every person that wanted to, you know, every HGTV watcher in town saw these videos. We had thousands of views on them, yeah. which for, again, for our little area and for our niche little market, it was a, it was a big deal. And it was such a big deal that it actually started this, this guy that I'm talking about. It kind of started him going down the pathway of becoming a major influencer in our market and he he is go into any market in america yeah and tell me the biggest house flipper in town what would their market share be maybe one percent if they had one percent market share it'd be massive this yeah. guy probably has 25 to 50 percent market share whoa in birmingham yeah okay and and he was already doing a lot of great things, but me just kind of starting that ball rolling of him putting out videos. And we ended up doing a lot of collaboration together. Yeah. Um, and I've wholesaled him deals. He's taught me a lot about house flipping. I flip houses. I'm in an in-house flip right now where I'm kind of live in flip. I mean, yeah. where I'm kind of living here. I'm going to live here for maybe a year and then, and then sell it. Yeah. He has provided me with tons and tons of like 
I couldn't even I couldn't even like tell you everything he's he's done for me. Resources, um, contacts, contractors, um, subcontractors, um, how to get building inspectors, like like <laughs> home like building inspectors where he's like, Hey, I know that guy. Just yeah. tell him you know me. Like stuff like that is invaluable. It's invaluable to have a home inspector that knows you and knows the other guy, so he's gonna treat you favorably. It's going to save you thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars. And that's why relationships are the most important thing that we should be stressing when it comes to real estate. It's not like we can go pay a mentor 5000 10000 50000 whatever. What you, for me to pay someone a lot of money to get mentored and get coaching, I want their contacts and their relationships. That's where it's going to save you money. That's where it's going to make you money on the back end to really understand that stuff. Literally, if you're in the business for um, a year, three yeah. years, five years, it can end up saving you or making you literally hundreds of thousands of dollars just by knowing the right people, knowing the right accountant, knowing the right attorney to use. These things that they get completely overlooked. It's like, well, I'm just going to go flip through the phone book or Google search nowadays. Yeah. I'm just going to Google search. Just dated myself. <laughs> I'm just going to Google search a real estate attorney. Well, if if I would have contacted Glenn or Brian or somebody that knows the area, they could have saved me a couple thousand dollars by just giving me the right one right off the bat. Stuff like that gets so overlooked and so discounted that that I, I'm trying to bring that back. Yep. Like how can we – really stress and emphasize how important these relationships and these contacts um, are. And the way to build these relationships from the beginning is to provide value. I went and shot this video series for this guy expecting nothing in return. I didn't charge him a penny. I just wanted to get in his good graces. I just want him to think favorably of me to where if I did have a favor down the road, maybe he would honor that. Yep. That's actually why I started the podcast. I was talking to an investor down in the States and he said, start a podcast and then you, there's no way of monetizing it off the start. You're like, just do it, do it regularly, do it every week and give out as much content as you possibly can. And until you figure, eventually you'll figure out what, how you're going to do this. But until then, just give and it'll all that the whole world works in a big circle and stuff will come back to you. The people will come to you. So oh, if you... If you're going to go to these meetups, like I know you're, we didn't even mention this. I think you run the biggest meetup it, for sure in Alabama and maybe I know you're in Georgia and some, I think, northern Florida too. Um, yeah. Going to these meetups, how, what's the best way to do this? Are we? Do you go there and just try and meet as many people as you can, get as many cards you can? Is there a focus level? What, what should we be doing yeah. with these things? Are these people who are brand new or people who are already in, investors? Let's, let's it's talk, kind of a different strategy. Talk about both. Let's, let's talk about both. I, like, I love it because they're um, both different levels all the time. Let's yeah, see. if I'm brand new, first of all, if I'm brand new, I, for, I empathize with you because I was already in your shoes. I was brand new one day, and I went to a, a kind of a meetup group. It was, a, it was a RIA here locally, and I didn't know anybody, and nobody talked to me, and I didn't know what to say to anybody. I didn't go up to anybody. I'm, I'm actually an introvert, believe it or not, <laughs> in an extrovert's <laughs> body. Um, I know when I have to turn it on, and I can, and I do but I'm actually an introvert. If I go into a room, I don't know people, I'm going to go sit down or I'm going to go sit, stand in the corner, not in a corner, but I'm just going to kind of stand there. I'm going to yeah. wait for someone to come to me. Yeah. And, and so if that's you. I already get it. And I, I'm with you and I understand. And it's very, very difficult. Um, it, for the brand new person that's just trying to learn real estate, just go and go consistently and just sit there, listen to the speakers. Um, eventually you're, you'll kind of start talking to some people, start to get to know some people. But until you do, it is a little bit more difficult. It's, it's, it's hard to, as someone who's brand new, just to go, hey, I'm Brian. Yeah. Well, what do you do, Brian? Are you in real estate? No. I'm trying to get in real estate, though. And, and that's fine. You can do that. There's nothing wrong with that. Some so, more social people would do that. Yeah. But for me, I want to be strategic. Um, if I'm going, and this might be for someone who's more intermediate or someone who's already kind of in, in the business. If I'm going to any event not just a meetup group it could be a seminar it could be a conference any event at all it could be even be an online thing which obviously now kind of we're in those times that, that i have the breakout sessions but if i'm going to any event i i want to go number one i want to go with an objective in mind why am i going you need to answer that question first am i going just to hang out and have a good time because if you there's nothing wrong with that 
Yeah. But you need to be honest with yourself. Am I going just to hang out with friends? Fine, cool, do that. If that's what you need or want to do, do that. But you need to have an, excuse me, you need to have an objective in mind first. If you're kind of intermediate, maybe you need a cash buyer. Maybe you got a deal and you need, yeah. a, you need a buyer for that deal. Take that deal with you. So, and then the first thing I usually do when I'm going into something brand new and I have that objective in mind, I go straight to the organizer. I go straight to the person who has organized the event. And I tell that person what my agenda is. Hey, I'm here um, at your great event. You got an awesome event here. Would you, who could you recommend I talk to to help me sell this deal? Or who could, whatever my goal is. Yep. I'm looking for private money. Is there anyone that you could introduce me to that is either a private money lender or someone who knows how to talk to private money lenders? Anyone that you could, other people who are looking for private money that I could get tips from, I'm looking for this one particular thing. Who could you point me in that direction to? The organizer, typically speaking, is going to love that. They're going to love that because organizers, and this is me, by the way, because I, um, I run the Birmingham REI Live. We have Real Estate Investing Live. We're in five locations. Um, I run Birmingham. We have other um, folks who run Atlanta, Columbia, South Carolina. Orlando and um, uh, Sarasota, Florida. We have people that run those. Yep. So if someone comes up to me and I'm the organizer and they're asking me this question, that's what I love to do. I'm a connector. I'm a connector. If you're someone who is organizing these events, you probably have that trait. You are probably a connector as well. I want to connect. And I have a personal rule. And all of our other REI Live people, they know my rule. I have a personal rule. If anyone ever asks something of me, and it takes me less than five minutes to do it, I'll do it every time, okay? That's me, I'm a connector, I want to help. I want to provide value to people, even if it's, even if it's someone who I know doesn't really have anything to offer that I need, at least that I think. Yep. Um, they don't really, they probably don't have anything that I need, I'm still gonna provide them value because I want them so maybe one day they can, or maybe they're going to tell somebody about how great this group was because this, this uh, organizer did this and this and this. You should come. So it, it come, it's going to come back to you. The word of mouth alone, it, it, which is obviously, the, it's, we've all heard, it's the greatest form of advertising. The word of mouth alone is, is, is worth it. So that's how I approach when I go, I'm going to actually a big um, conference in St. Louis um, in, in just a couple of weeks. Yeah. And I'm already, I am writing out a list of people I want to meet there that I know are going to be there. Mm -hmm. um, people, uh, things that I need. Why am I going? List of goals I'm trying to achieve. Um, I'm already making that list now. Like when you, if you know that someone, this kind of leads into another story that you want me to tell you. You want me to go? <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's do it. Let's, let's do it. No. I feel like it's like diarrhea of the mouth right now. So I went, so if you are going to an event and you know someone's going to be there and you know that this person can help you in your business somehow, some way, you need to create a plan. Yep. You create a plan. Don't just go to these meetings and just hope serendipitously things just fall into place for you. Um, yeah, you, everyone's heard the saying, you, you make your own luck. No, things don't just like, you don't just like fall and trip over a lot of money. You actually plan it out. And people can really help you get to the next level. So you asked me to, to tell the Tom Kroll story. Yeah. Tom Kroll, if you guys don't know, I think, first of all, he's one of the greatest people that I know. Yeah. He is um, one of the greatest business leaders who I know. He started a company called Wholesaling Inc. If, if you don't never heard of him before. And it's the largest and most successful wholesaling coaching program that's out there that I know of and that he knows of. And I know a lot of them. Yeah. So – Back in 2000, late 2017, 2018, I was getting my um, kind of speaking career started, my, about to launch a book, and I um, was doing all this stuff. And I was like, I made a list of the 10 people who I felt like at that moment could help me the most catapult what I was trying to do. And Tom Kroll was number one on that list, and I didn't know Tom Kroll. Okay. I didn't, I didn't, I know who he was, but I didn't know him. I didn't have a relationship with him. So the first thing I do, if I know that there's someone, so well, the first thing I do is I make a list. If yes. I know that there's, there, there's, um, I want to make a list and anyone can do this. It doesn't matter if you're in real estate or if you're just getting started in real estate, anyone can do this. 
first thing I do is I make a list of who can help me right now, not who can help me later down the road once I get going. Who can help me be successful today? If it's a coach, if it's a, someone who has a resource, whatever it is, make a list. And I had a list of uh, you know probably eight or nine or ten people uh, of, of people who, who I thought can help me today. Tom Kroll was number one on the list. And then the reason he was number one is because he had the most successful, most listened to, most downloaded podcast. I wanted to get on that podcast. Um, he had tremendous influence in, in our sphere. He had uh, an event. He, he, he does events. So all these things, all these reasons why Tom Kroll was the guy that I needed to meet. So the second thing I needed to do after I made the list, I don't know Tom Kroll. I could probably DM him. I think we're friends on Facebook. I could probably DM him, but a cold DM, that's like a last resort. You can do a cold DM. I've done it. I've done it very successfully. I have templates on how to do that successfully. But what's better is a warm introduction. If you can get a warm introduction to someone that you're trying to meet, it's infinitely better than a cold, just like a cold atmosphere, a cold call or a cold DM or something like that. So, now you want to play kind of six degrees of separation here. Who do I know? Who knows? Who do I know really well? Who knows Tom Kroll really well? And for me, and I've already mentioned his name twice to, on this podcast, is Joe McCall. Okay, Joe McCall and, and Tom Kroll are best friends. And I've, I've got Joe's cell phone number. He mentored me years ago. Um, we're, we're pretty good friends. We know each other really well. I've been on his, his podcast three or four times. He's been on mine a few times. So yep. I reached out to Joe, sent him a text. Hey, can you introduce me to Tom Kroll? That's it. He said, absolutely. He put me in a text thread with Tom. Said, hey, Tom, this is Brian. I'm sure you know him, but I want to introduce him. He's a great guy. Da, 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 da. For someone else to – now, we can sing our praises, right, Glenn? Oh, yeah. yeah we we, can, oh, we yeah. can talk about ourselves and we can <laughs> sing our own praises to the moon. But for someone else to sing praises for you, it just carries so much more weight. For me to say, hey, hey, Glenn, I'd love to come on your podcast. I'm a great guy. I got a great book, and I do this. I hear, I, I don't know. If I get those all I, the time too, and I'm I like, I get those messages oh. five times a week. <laughs> so, but when someone I know and trust says, hey, you need to get, you need to get Glenn on your podcast. That's all they need to say. They don't need to give me a reason. Yeah. Someone I know and trust is telling me I need to get Glenn on my podcast. Done. Done. Because I trust that person so much. So it was, the text was like, Tom, you need to know, you need to get to know Brian. And I think that was it. And Tom's like, great. Here's my assistance information. Set up a time. We'll, we'll chat. I got on the phone with Tom, tried to book him and get on, on my podcast. He was going through a tough situation right then um, with some family stuff. So we end up getting delayed a few times and January rolls around. Yeah. And this is January of 2018. So it's almost three years ago. And he's do, putting on his wholesaling summit. And I don't need to learn about wholesaling. I don't I want to say I know everything about wholesaling, but I've done it very successfully. Um, yeah. I don't need to learn. I don't need to go to a wholesaling summit to learn wholesaling. Right. But I wanted to go anyway to meet him face to face. So I p- bought my own way. I have a $500 ticket for the wholesaling summit. I think it was like $497. I had to fly down to Orlando on my own dime, stay at a very expensive hotel where the, where the event was going. I probably yeah. spent two grand with food and travel and everything. Probably spent two grand. And, and again, when I go to an event, I have an objective in mind. Yep. I want to meet Tom Kroll. My objective is I want to meet him. That's all I want to do is, hey, I was the guy that talked to you on the phone a couple of times. Our podcast kind of got um, uh, rescheduled a couple of times. We haven't been able to do it yet. Just want to meet you face to face. That's the only reason I went. Yeah, it's the only reason why I just want to meet him face to face. I could have done that anytime, anywhere, but I wanted to support him, support his event. So I get down there. I send him a quick text. I get down there the day before. I send him a quick text. Didn't want to bother him. Quick text. Hey, Tom, just want to let you know I'm in town. If you've got five or 10 minutes, I'd love to just grab a quick coffee. If not, no big deal. I'll see you at the, at the event tomorrow. He texts me back a few minutes later, Brian, I'd, I'd love to get coffee. Unfortunately, um, i got a lot of fires I'm trying to put out right now. We've had two speakers cancel already, um, and I think a third is about to cancel. <laughs> and so um, I'll, I'll see you tomorrow. i, I got to figure this out. So I'm just like, 
Whoa, whoa. whoa. <laughs> speaker's canceled. I'm a speaker. I want to get on your stage. Uh, and I don't want to I don't want to sit here and look selfish. You know, I don't right. I, I've yeah. got is, there's a potential You don't want to take advantage of a of a, of a situation. Yeah. There's a potential opportunity here. I don't want to take advantage of a situation like you said. Um, but maybe I can frame it in a way I, if he has a couple speakers that that are out, maybe he's looking for a speaker and maybe I could fill that role. Maybe it could help him. It could be a win-win. win-win. So I sent him a text back after, first of all, I kind of, it was like in my mind, like 10 minutes went by before I texted him back because I was like, dude, cause I was struggling with, is it selfish for me to ask? Is it not? Um, I don't think it's selfish of you to ask that question. Hey, you know, I could be a speaker if you got to frame it the right way, though. You have yeah. to really present it like, hey, and this is what I said. This is why I sent it back. I, I, I sent him a text back that said something like this. Um, I need to go back and, and actually pull it so I can get it yeah. word word. But it was something like, oh, man, that sucks. I hate that. Um, but just to let you know, I am a speaker. I do have original content. If you need me, I'm available. If not, no big deal. I'll see you tomorrow. So made it look super casual. Inside, I was like, oh, come on, please. I'd love to speak on your stage. There's going to be like three or 400 yeah. people there. Yeah. Um, and I was, I was about to launch a book too. So it's going to be, it would, it would have been a really big deal for me. Yeah. So he texts me back immediately and it said, when can we meet? <laughs> and, that was, and I was like, oh my gosh. So some people would be like, well, Brian, you just got lucky. And I was like, okay, yes, there was an element of chance there, but I did, I put myself in that position. I went down there to meet him. And when you take action, when you take massive action, as Tom Crow would say, massive imperfect action, when you do those things, all sorts of opportunities open themselves up. Not necessarily a speaking opportunity like that, where I got to, I got to you know, speak on his stage, where I met some incredible people, by the way. Pe- like every person... Every single person who runs our other REI Live um, w- was at that wholesaling conference, and they were Tom Kroll's student first, and then they they became an affiliate of ours to run REI Live Atlanta, um, Columbia, Sarasota, and uh, and Orlando. So that alone, you're talking about yeah. me being intentional, spending two thousand dollars to pay my own way to go to go to Orlando to meet Tom Kroll. Ended up, I sold a ton of books. Like I just, and I wasn't trying to sell books. I just said, "Hey, I got a book coming out. Yeah, um, come ch- check it out if you yeah. want to." Sold a ton of books. Um, met a ton of great people. Um, I got four other REI Live operators out of it. Like it was, I got to go on his podcast, Tom Kroll's podcast. I've been on it twice. He's been on my podcast a couple of times. Built an incredible friendship with Tom Kroll. Now we're do kind of in business a little bit together where. He is um, supporting. We do REI coaches. So real, if you're a real estate coach, we put on a, an event here in Birmingham. We just did our second one uh, about a month ago. He's come and spoken that two years in a row. We have a great friendship now. Um, I've been to his his house. We've, we've gone out to dinner. Our families have been out to dinner. Like Things like that you can do, anyone can do if you just follow these steps, make a list of who can help you. Be intentional about if you're going to an event, be intentional about, well, first of all, you need to be connected to that person. How can I be connected to that person? Who do I know that knows them and and ask for a warm introduction and then provide value? I went down there to provide value to him. I was going to go down there and serve. Hey, do you need me to check people in? Do you need me to do this? That's why I I went down there just to meet him and just to serve. And, And this is what can happen. So all sorts of opportunities can happen. And this is why... People are the most important part of real estate. Networking is the most important part of real estate. If you can understand that and get that down, then your net work will become your net worth. That was gold. So yeah, I think we all picked out a lot of things. I love lists. That's all. Otherwise, I wouldn't get anything done. I make lists every day. <laughs> and uh, if you're actually, what I've found is the best list you make are the ones you make the day before, because then you're not yeah. like in the moment. So, uh, but yeah, list intentionality. Uh, you know, get out there, meet people. Don't waste your time with the whole room, uh, but don't push the whole room away either. If anyone wants to come talk to you, give them the time of day, give them the five minutes. Um, great, great tips. Great tips. Yeah. Um, Brian, if people wanted to find you, um, we kind of touched on the podcast, the books. Um, where do they where do they go to find this? I'll throw it all in the show notes. Yeah. 
Well, first of all, um, I do have a book. It's out on Amazon right now. It's called Nothing's for Sale. It came out uh, maybe two years ago. It's seven ninety nine. It cost me eight dollars to keep that on Amazon, so I lose a penny every time someone buys it. Um, oh. <laughs> if you want to buy it, great, go for it. I'm not here to pitch books. That's actually going to come off at Amazon here in the next when our when our new book launches. Um, we're going to, because it was just self published and it was just something really simple, a little guide to get started. It's called Nothing's for Sale. It's how to become the authority in your local market. And it's really a lot of the things I just talked about as well. Um, so the book, no big deal. It's called nothing's for sale. If you want that cool. Um, we actually paused our, um, podcast. The last episode we did was last January was January. So it's been almost a year now since we've done a podcast, we're going to get back into it. Um, we've done one live event. No, well, I guess two live events since all this COVID stuff has gone down. We're yep. still kind of kind of touch and go with COVID. Um, we tried it out a couple of times. Some people were like, I'm not coming. Some people were like, I'm only coming if you make people wear masks. Some people were like, uh, we, we want people to be 10 feet apart, all this stuff. So we're still trying to navigate all that. Um, I'm doing some online stuff, but not a lot. Really, if you want to find me, if you need something, that, that would be the biggest thing. If you feel like I provide you value today and you're something I can help you with, um, I'm not really coaching anymore. I'm not really doing all that. We're putting on some meetups here and there. Um, but if there's something I can help you with, reach out to me on, on social media, whether it's Facebook, Instagram. It's just Brian Tripp. You'll find me. Um, just shoot me a DM. Like I said, I, I mentioned earlier on the show, if it takes me less than five minutes to do it, if you need a connection, you need a resource, you need a contract, you need this or that. I got my start. I got my start at wholesaling. I've done over 500 real estate transactions. We didn't even talk about real estate. Um, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm a huge believer in creative finance. I bought houses subject to. I bought houses with seller financing. My I feel like my key niche right now is seller financing, finding houses for zero down, zero interest. So you want to learn stuff like that? I've got contracts and forms. If you want any of that, shoot me a quick DM. Get straight to the point. Just tell me, hey, I heard you on this podcast. Heard you on Glenn's podcast, and yep. you mentioned a form. Would you mind sending me? this just get straight to the point i'll send it to you no big deal um but i really appreciate you glenn i appreciate yeah. all you guys listening and watching um if you're ever in birmingham if you're ever in alabama um look us up on meetup.com and and come to one of our events once this covid is done i will be going to to all of my markets uh to, to visit again i have a whole pile of properties i've never seen <laughs> glenn yeah <laughs> yeah so anyway but oh your book your new one is it uh you're gonna have an audio book version of it we are. We're going to go all out with this. It's called the ROI of life. It's how to cash flow relationships. Okay. And that's that's how to. Um, that's that's what it's going to be. And we're looking at early spring. And yeah, I'll maybe I'll come back on your show when we when we launch it. Yeah, and I also run a book club. So every month we do a awesome. book club for a whole bunch of mostly Canadians, right? Who, who are all in real estate investing. But we, uh, the criteria to be one of the books is you have to have an audio version and a hard print version because some people like some, some people like other. That's why I asked. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we are. Uh, we're doing. We're doing all that. Yeah, it's gonna be. It's gonna be a, a lot bigger and better of a launch than than the first book. The first book I was just understanding how to do it. I've never yep. written a book before, and you know yep. a lot of the real estate influencers that are out there when they write a book, they take their podcasts or they, they, they just talk into audio. This is me. Actually, I have a journalism degree. I have an English degree. I have a literature master's in literature. I, I'm actually writing a book. <laughs> um, unlike just speaking it into a, into a, um, you know, microphone or something. Yeah. Let yeah. someone transcribe it for you. But anyway, <laughs> I think if I write fine. a book, I, I think when I write a book, I'll probably just transcribe it. I'll just sit here for like 20 hours and talk. <laughs> nothing wrong with it. There's nothing yeah. wrong with that at all. Yeah, absolutely not. Yeah. I don't have a journalism background, so <laughs> it would probably be ugly. People go, that's not even a proper sentence. But anyway, <laughs> but I'm, oh, no, I, I am totally literate. I mean, maybe I made myself sound really bad there, but, <laughs> but anyway. Okay, thanks for coming on the show, Brian. I really appreciate it. I think a lot of people could find a lot of value in that, and you can apply it to whatever your goal is, and you can, you can make this go as wide as you want. That's why I was saying at the start, don't tune out because it's networking. It, it's networking, and it... it it is the lifeblood of this, of this real estate stuff we're doing, especially for us doing massive distances, different countries, different, like some people are investing, you know, it's a 20 hour drive to get to your properties. And like there, you, you have to have good contacts and stuff everywhere you go. It is the lifeblood of this business. And a lot of people, it's one of the things people push off the most. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. So, anyway. 
Thanks so much, Brian. Thank you. I know. I appreciate you having me on.